Hi there. So uh, welcome to Weird Shit episode one. Um, today I'm going to talk a little bit about modifiers. Uh, so I tend to do as many things with modifiers as possible, um, mainly because I'm kind of a lazy person, um, but I'm also not the uh, biggest fan of um, modeling itself. Uh, I find it to be a little bit boring, but um, you know, to each their own. Obviously, I have a lot of respect for people that are really good at modeling. Uh, I'm just not really that into it. So I'm going to show you a couple examples of what I do with modifiers um, and sort of the power of modifiers and how to keep things procedural in Blender. So first one I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make a landscape really quickly. And I'm going to do all these sort of off the cuff so you see some of the mistakes that I make if I make them. Um, and I can show you how to solve them on the spot as well. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a subsurf modifier um, just to add in a little bit more uh, detail, but we'll have a look at that in a second. And then with the displace modifier, I'm going to add in a new texture. Now with that texture, I'm just going to hold down control and scroll down through some of these. The clouds texture generally is a pretty good one for landscapes, but you can try different ones. Um, so I'm going to mess with the size here a little bit. And you can see we're immediately getting sort of um, a nice little landscape thing going on here. Uh, I'm going to mess with the mid-level a little bit. So we have, um, basically you're telling Blender where to uh, count the, where basically the mid-level of your texture is. So by setting it lower, it's actually going to take the darker parts of the mid-level. So everything's going to be pushed out. Uh, if I set this to one, then you'll see everything is actually going to be pushed down into um, the opposite direction of the normal. So you know, you can find sort of a good balance. Now, the reason I'm doing this, let's say uh, you have a landscape here and you want to do something really simple with it. Um, like I said, I'm going to keep these very basic. What you can do as well is if we go into our weight paint mode, where are we? Uh, weight paint. Let's say you want sort of a little path through these, um, running through sort of through here. Now, again, this is very basic. Uh, what we can do is if we go back into object mode to keep things a little more clear, uh, we can grab this vertex group. Now, you'll notice that it's actually doing the opposite. It's just grabbing that vertex group. And instead of going into the vertex group and um, actually trying to uh, invert it and stuff like that, we should do that with a modifier. So, for example, the vertex weight edit, I have to make sure it's uh, before the displace at least. I like putting it before the subsurf as well, um, just to keep things a little bit quicker. But you have to make sure it's before the displace, otherwise it won't work because it's actually changing it uh, after. So what we can do here is if we set this to custom curve, we can actually flip this curve. And we won't see anything happen yet because we haven't assigned our vertex group yet. And there you go. Now, uh, I believe it's group add that we need to click. And now it's actually using the inverse of that vertex, uh, vertex group that we created. So it's a very, very quick and easy way to create sort of a path in a, uh, in a landscape. But it just gives you an idea of the, um, of the power of these things. Now, obviously, uh, we can mess with the, the curve itself. So we can try and get the fall off a little bit better. Or in this case, um, we could go back to the uh, weight paint. And we could actually use the blur brush uh, to blur out the boundaries between the different weights. Um, let's see if I add it in here. You'll see it takes a little getting used to but um, once you get the hang of this type of stuff, it's really a lot of fun to use. And don't forget, we're actually uh, also affecting the fall off of our curve here. So by doing this, we can get it narrower or wider. So that's just one very quick example. And the cool thing is we can always go back and change this. Um, there we go. You can change that, uh, that texture, sorry, completely. And, um, you know, introduce all kinds of stuff to it, change the size, make it bigger, smaller. So you can create these really, really weird things very quickly, which is really nice. If we set this to smooth, we get a fairly nice result. Um, obviously, the cool thing about having the subsurf here is you can keep sort of subdividing it and getting better and better results. Now, what you're seeing here is the, um, the weight paint. Uh, on the original polygons is sort of distorting it a little bit. So you might want to up res your original base mesh uh, a little bit in edit mode instead of using the subsurf. But these are just the kind of options that you could do. 
So uh, I'm gonna move on to the next thing. This is a cool little trick that I found uh, that I really like using. Um, let's say, we'll just start with this round cube here. I'm gonna subdivide, oh, subdivide this smoothly with a few things. Uh, I could do this with a subdivide modifier actually, so I'll do that. Uh, there we go. So to add the subsurf, uh, as you can see, control one, two, or three, um, or four, or five, or six. Oh no, six doesn't work, it seems. So you can actually adjust the um, level of your subsurf on the fly with your keyboard. So that's control and E. Not the numpad, but the keys above your uh, regular text keys. So there we go. Set this one to three as well in case we end up rendering something. And the cool thing is actually I'm going to leave this flat. Uh, what's really nice is if you use the decimate modifier on here and you set it to unsubdivide, let's see, and we up the iterations, it actually unsubdivides your mesh quite nicely, but it gives you sort of these different angled polygons, which is cool because it allows you to uh, get sort of a different pattern on things. So let's say I'm going to drop this one down a little bit so you can see actually the size and uh, we can throw something else on there, something like a wireframe. And you'll see you'll get uh, a really interesting result with just a few modifiers. So that's really, really nice. Now for the next one, I'm gonna actually use this quick, um, this quick add-on, it's called Manuel Bastoni Lab. Uh, you can find it on his website. I'll link it in the description below. This guy makes awesome things. Um, well, he makes this really cool modifier, which basically uh, allows you to put a character into your scene really, really quickly, which is awesome. Uh, as you can see, you can mess with it. I might do a separate video on this, but it's it's really, really cool to use. Uh, all I'm just going to do is I'm going to apply the, where are we? I'm just going to apply this armature modifier and throw out the rest for now and unparent this so we have something to work with. Now the reason I'm using um, just a human mesh is uh, so we have some sort of odd uh, and cool looking um, geometry to work with. So what I'm going to do, make sure I don't have anything selected and I can select everything. I'm just going to cut the body off. Um, Sounds a lot more dramatic than it is, but just to be able to show you this and so it runs a little bit quicker. So again, I'm going to add a subsurf modifier using that control and uh, number shortcut. Now, the cool thing is uh, we have a really nice mesh here, but I want to do something sort of weird with it. Uh, again, the decimate modifier is a really cool tool uh, if you set this to planar. Now, this might take a while, but what you can see is that it's sort of subdividing your um, your mesh really, really sort of in this really cool way, it's using an angular sort of, um, actually it's not subdividing, but it's, it's decimating it in an angular fashion. So if we set this to like 10 degrees, for example, it takes a little while to compute, especially if there's other modifiers in front of it. But I um, see so you get this really, really interesting result. Uh, again, mix that with this. I'm just showing on the, uh, throwing on the wireframe to show you. Ooh, it's a bit big maybe. Come on. Still a bit much, it seems. Oh no. Come on, just work. There we go. Um, if we don't replace the original. Now obviously we have the eyes and the eyelashes and stuff sort of working against us, but as you can see, uh, again, this is just a very crude example. Um, it gives you these really, really cool, interesting patterns to do stuff with and uh, to mess with. So um, let's see what else have we got. Okay, move on to the next one. There we go. Um, again, I'm going to use a round cube for this one. Add in a couple of modifiers and I'm going to add in that displace modifier. So uh, for the people that uh, follow me on Instagram, uh, I do a lot of these really small kind of rotating, weirdly moving things. Um, this is the way I do them. They're actually fairly easy to do. Okay, I don't know why it's wigging out now. 
not showing me the texture panel. It'll show me on that one, but it won't show me on this one. That's interesting, to say the least. All right, so we can go back and use that original texture. Uh, I just copied it. I don't know why it's freaking out, but anyway. Oh, so now it's going to work. All right, fair enough. Uh, use a new one. There we go. Uh, so I just copied the other one over that was in the landscape, and now I'm actually going to increase the size a little bit. So you can see immediately you get these really, really interesting results um, depending on which ones you use. The Voronoi one is really nice. Uh, I found that messing with these, for example, gives you super, super interesting results. And again, messing with the size. Now, all of this can be controlled by adding in more subdivisions. And yeah, it's a little slow sometimes, but um, and maybe the uh, the topology isn't great. But the thing is, even if you're not going to use this as a final sort of model, um, you can remesh these, for example, if you wanted to. So it might get a little slow here, but that's all right. So I tend to set this to smooth and then increase the arc tree depth. Don't forget to turn on smooth shading if you want to see sort of a nicer object. And as you can see, uh, we could even go from here. So if we were to apply these modifiers, yeah, it's a crazy dense mesh, but let's say you want to start sculpting something or um, you need this type of shape for your um, for base mesh or whatever, you actually retopologize this as well. So, um, yeah, it works. I mean, it's a little, it's a little hacky. It's, it's not perfect, but it works just fine. And uh, you can do some really cool things with it. Now, I'm going to drop these subdivisions down to um, speed this up a bit and remove the remesh. And I'm actually going to use a slightly different. There we go. Let's say we use this. Um, I'm going to show you one trick as well, which I use uh, to loop animations uh, with a displace. So if I add a circle to this, uh, I'll just add this in a little bit, and I add an empty. Nope. Do Control Z. There we go. And I add these plain axes. Add them in the middle. And uh, what I can do then is I could actually constrain these to follow the Bezier circle. And if we then in our where are we? displace modifier, we use this object. We can actually use the object location to move our map around in 3D space, which is awesome. Um, so if I were to select our empty now with the constraint, remember it's following the path, and I move the path, you can actually see the um, the thing move around as well. And again, if you, I'm rotating the empty now that controls that displacement, which is really cool. So uh, to loop something like this, what I could do if I set this to zero and I hit I to record keyframe and then go to one frame after my last frame of my animation and set it to 100. Uh, on 100, it actually returns the original position. So you can think of it as a percentage. There we go. What I can do now is play this and you'll see it'll actually loop perfectly. So if I were to smooth this out, you'll see I actually have a perfect loop of something moving around. So this is a really cool way to add some secondary animation on top of things. Um, again, you could add a displace modifier on a displace modifier and you can just keep going, uh, bring in the strength a little bit. There you go, get some of these sharper edges going, maybe add a map into here as well um, and grab displace number three bring this map down a little bit. And you can see we get these really, really complex things quite quickly and I can up the subdivisions as I need it. Yeah, my frame rate's dipping down a little bit, but still, I mean, this is some really cool stuff um, that you might only think you can get through sort of weird cloth sims or other things, but you can do a lot with just modifiers. Um, actually, I don't know why I hit render there, but let's stop playing this. And uh, for the very last one, um, I'm actually gonna work on top of this one to show you something that I think is just absolutely awesome. Um, if we had a wireframe on top of this and 
we turn off replace original. Actually, I'm going to turn down the subsurf one more so we get nice, nice little pattern. If you were at to add a sub subdivision surface modifier onto this and actually add in, you see you get this really cool sort of mesh, uh, maybe even fishnet e type pattern, and you can do some extremely cool things with this. So uh, let's see if I make this bigger. There we go. Um, you have some really, really interesting options. And I mean, obviously I've only shown a few of them, but there's so many of these modifiers uh, that do amazing, amazing things. So um, I would definitely encourage you to have a look at them and, and check them all out. Um, so one last one, I guess, uh, I'll do very quickly is um, the, as you can see, I start with a round cube a lot. Um, it's enabled actually, uh, if you were wondering, if you go into the add-ons, uh, there's this extra objects, I believe under uh, add mesh that adds all of these into your menu. So you've got a lot of extra stuff you can mess around with here. Uh, again, I don't, you know, I'm not that big into the process of modeling itself. So anything I can get for free um, when it comes to modeling is awesome. Um, so I've kind of lost my train of thought here. Let me think of what the last thing was that I wanted to show you guys. Um, as usual, we'll start with a subdivision surface. Let's see. Ah, yes, it was the bevel that I wanted to show you guys. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a wireframe first, actually drop this down to maybe one. And obviously always make sure that they're the same amount if you're doing this type of modeling. Uh, so when you don't render, you get really weird results. But what happens when I throw a bevel modifier in the mix before? So this is really cool because you can actually get more or less um, intricate patterns with this. So this is awesome. I mean, you could even copy it if you wanted to and go completely overboard. But I'm just I just want to show you this real quick. Uh, again, if I add a subdivision surface to this, let's see if we turn off the uh, subsurf there and maybe add, I usually add about three levels to smooth this out. It does the trick. Now, obviously, if you've got a really high res mesh, you want to watch out a little bit, but um, this works quite well. So um, let's see, I'm going to turn off replace original. There you go. You get this really, really cool sort of interesting looking thing. Um, and you get these nice corresponding faces under it because we actually use the bevel, which is being used in the subdivision as well. I don't know if we'll be able to see it that well though. Um, but again, this is all interactive. So you could add segments into this to get more stuff. Um, you could mess with the profile a little bit, but that's only gonna work with the segments on. I don't know how much this is gonna do with the subdivision surface. That's all right, it works, but it's not great. Um, turn on the segments again. You could, um, Let's see, change these offset methods. So you get all kinds of different um, methods that you can play around with. Now, one last thing that I'm, I'm gonna show you before I go uh, is if we're actually to add another subsubmission surface, it's not gonna add anything, but if we add this before the original subsurf, which uh, if I turn this off, you can see is gonna be smoothing out. If I turn this one off as well, it smooths out and it sort of makes these, uh, yeah, I guess that makes the wireframe a little more organic. Um, with that on, if you were to turn on a second subsurf, obviously it's not gonna do anything, but if I set this to simple, you'll see, because we're actually gonna get, let's see, we're actually gonna get more subdivisions in these uh, different connections. You can actually see that we can sharpen up the edges of this wireframe. So you could even do that, um, now, I'm not going to lie, as you can see, it gets really slow. So it might be worth collapsing down all the modifiers, applying all of them, uh, and then using the base mesh from there. And then maybe retopologizing it, or if it's working fine for this stuff, uh, work, stuff like that. So um, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the, uh, the first episode of this new show. And uh, any feedback is obviously uh, very welcome. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.